I'm sorry, I have to go now. I just got a notification <laughs> on my phone. I think my cat's sick in the hospital. Lo and behold, she texts, anyways, are you free Friday? I really have to go take care of her. <laughs> you should just let her talk herself into bed, so to speak. Thank you, appreciate it. Have a good night. Where's your favorite hotel by far? Um, sometimes online dating is easy and straightforward. Sometimes you message a girl one message and she sends you 10 messages back and throws her phone number at you. And sometimes the first time you vaguely suggest the idea of alcohol, she says, let's get together for a drink. But a lot of times that's not the case. A lot of times things are fine in terms of the girl liking you, but there are obstacles. There are things in life that get in the way. So what I wanna show you right now is an example of messaging and a date where it took me literally months back and forth with this girl to get her out on a date. And we were flying in, uh, in town and out of town and we we're not in the same place. And the big thing is most guys lose momentum when this happens. It's okay and easy to flirt for a few texts, but how do you keep it flirty? How do you keep it upbeat? How do you keep it interesting when you're going back and forth and you try and make a plan and then you can't? And she gets back to you and you're out of town. How do you keep the tension? How do you keep the momentum? I'm gonna show you how in this example right here. Let's check it out. So this next breakdown has a lot of really interesting elements to it. Number one, this is a smart, successful, attractive girl who kind of knows it and is pretty confident. Um, number two, there was an interesting delay here in the sense that I started messaging her early on and then I got off the app and had to come back and, and resuscitate it, getting back on the app. And then finally, there's a scheduling thing because I was trying to schedule multiple dates within a short period of time when I was actually making this come about. Uh, so let's look at all the texting and messaging with that in mind. So it starts off, she liked my photo and it's this one with me counting um, bills of, of foreign currency on a bed somewhere. And I said, if you can guess the context of this pic or make up one that makes me laugh, I'll buy you a drink. Um, and I think this was actually original to her. Like I think I wrote this originally for her, but then I th thought it worked, I thought it was good. So I've actually used this in subsequent with subsequent girls afterwards but this i think was the first time i'd written it and so she writes uh that's a lot of work for a drink huh no easy work with you and then she say i will say find the best bill to cut coke lol all right so that's really interesting um number one she's calling out that i'm making her work and yet she still does it um but then her answer is very interesting in terms of her blueprint it sounds like kind of a party girl blueprint, kind of a girl who is is a bit social, that sort of thing. And her photos are, are fairly social as well. They're like, you know, she's fairly well dressed. She has a good body. She's in like bar looking places, etc. cetera. So um, it, it fits a little bit. But I don't want to go the route of being the party guy. I don't want to go the route of being all about drugs or anything like that, especially since I don't actually do drugs at all. But even if I did, I wouldn't necessarily want to go that route as, as you know, how I'd want to per be perceived. So I say, LOL, interesting impression you have of me but certainly not the answer of an unadventurous person. So I don't want to like um, hate on her for being a party girl, but I also don't want to play it up. And so that's where I'm going here and I'm challenging her just a little bit as well. She goes, haha, I don't do it personally. So she got what I was saying. She got what I was getting at here. Um, but if I say I never seen people do it, it's a hypocrite. Um, and that's interesting, the language here, right? It's a hypocrite. So we have a little bit of a language barrier, perhaps, or a little bit of a non-native English speaking, which is something to be aware of, especially since she seems very educated in other ways. Um, but she also might have meant like, I'm a hypocrite, and she like maybe texted it, deleted it, texted it a different way. It could just be a typo as well. Um, okay, but she basically qualified herself with this answer. So I'm going to kind of reward her with the answer as we move forward. I say, good answer. Could have easily gone too far in either direction on that one, LOL. And I was actually thinking this before she responded. I'm like, what's she going to write to this? Like, it was a little risky because she could go too far party girl and that would turn me off. She could go too far serious and no fun and that would turn me off. So she, she actually struck a nice balance of right in the middle. Um, so it actually was a really good answer. Um, like socially aware, good answer on her part. So I say, um, could have gone too far in either direction. Can I assume you do partake in an occasional drink with an attractive new friend then? All right, so I don't want to talk about doing Coke, but if she has been around Coke, she probably drinks, right? It's a pretty safe assumption. And she says, why occasional, right? So she's picking on this word occasional. Um, she double texted, but I think that's just a typo. So that's a bit of a shit test. Why occasional? It could be, it could be taken as a very positive thing. Why only occasional? Why not all the time? Um, but it could also be taken as nitpicking. Um, so here I challenge her, given that she seems like a high value girl. I say, well, I assume you don't drink 24 seven and you're probably at least mildly selective about the company and the little emoticon, right? So challenging her and she likes this and says, good point. So I just continue with the same theme and this is a, a general concept. 
if what you text gets a positive response, but not a lot of positive response, oftentimes you want to just continue the same thread and see if you can double down. So I say, haha, I do think we might find ourselves wanting to meet more than occasionally, but let's just start with a drink and some woody banter and find out, shall we? So she says, sounds good. I'm currently in city coming back uh, Tuesday. How's your weekend going by far? Um, and I think she means going so far or going by so far or something like that. Just a typo. Um, so now we have a logistical thing, right? We're both traveling and whatnot. So I say, cool, I was in London the past weekend, but I'll be back next Tuesday. So I guess we'll have to wait in suspense for one more week. Um, and now it's just a matter of killing time. We both like each other, we're killing time. She goes, nice, what's in London? Um, so now this is an opportunity for me to convey a little bit of good personality and, and good high value lifestyle stuff. Um, say business, uh, but it's also one of my favorite places. Do you like to travel? Are you a spontaneous person in general? Um, I feel like this is generally pretty safe. She likes travel. Like she, she mentioned London. Does she like traveling? Almost everybody responds positively to this, but she actually didn't. She said, I like traveling, but I don't like London, LOL. All right, so she's being a little bit difficult. She's also being honest, right? She's not just fully blindly falling into my frame again. High value, high status girl, knows who she is, willing to speak for herself, et cetera. So, um, so I say, okay, well, let's, let's play with this. We have some time to kill. Um, you know, I'm not going to meet up with her anyway because we're both traveling. So I so say, interesting. So our first drink starts a whirlwind romance. Where shall we fly for our second date? All right. And so she says, I prefer more adventurous destinations. So she's still being a little crabby about the whole London thing. All right. Um, so I decided to challenge her and test her. So, so what's your version of adventurous? I go A, Bolivia, B, Egypt, C, Tokyo, D, next available international flight, 100% spontaneous. She goes A, B, and D. So anything but, anything but Tokyo. So apparently she doesn't want to go to like typical cities or big cities or places people go normally. Apparently that's her thing, whatever. Um, but the most important thing here is not her answer. The most important thing is that we've shifted from her objecting to the place that I mentioned and it being like this like minor bone of contention to me putting up a test and her engaging with the test, her participating in my frame. So I say, nice, I've never done B, but A and D have been among my favorite trips. Are you currently back in city? Um, and so I actually kind of planned it this way. I, pl I put things that were actually places I had been or places that were on my agenda because I knew that if she responded, it would lead to conversation. I wanted to have things to talk about. So this was actually, not that this was pre-planned in response to what, what she said, but I knew that these were going to be available options for me. She said, yes, I'm back, but we'll head to um, city Thursday again. I won't travel for a while after this, LOL. Tired. How's your weekend starting? All right, so we just have this issue where she clearly likes me, but we're having trouble meeting up. So I say, enjoy your trip. Perhaps we should exchange numbers. It might help with making plans between our travels. Again, this is the, the thing that needed to happen. She says, sounds good, and sends her number. However, at this point is when I kind of got off the app and stopped messaging and whatnot. So it now goes... July, August, three months and at three and a half months, basically without me messaging. All right. Um, so now I needed to resuscitate it. So I sent this message. Hey, uh, it's from Hinge. Hopefully your trip is fun. Now that we're both in town at the same time, perhaps we'll finally be able to meet for a drink. She says, hi, sure. Hearts emoticon positive. And then I didn't respond. She goes, which day are you free? And this will happen actually when you've flaked on a girl or ghosted a girl, not that it's a good policy or a good plan, but when you do do it, sometimes girls will chase you a bit harder afterwards because they know that there's actual scarcity there. Um, and that just shows the power of being willing to walk away. So that should be free this afternoon or evening if that works for you or possibly a week uh, a weekday evening. She says weekday evening is good. Um, so she sounds good. Should we do a quick call at some point in the meantime so we're not strangers? Right? And this is my policy of trying to have a phone call. Um, in general, it matters less in this case because I have a long texting history with her, but it's still a good idea um, for my own purposes of making sure that I have chemistry with the girl. It does reduce flaky. And this girl has been not particularly flaky in the sense of like disorganized flaky or canceling flaky, but she has been busy. So she's been flaky in that way. Um, so she says, let's see, a bit busy since I need to catch up with work and a bunch of things after the vacation. Uh, I follow up a couple days later. How's your week looking? Miss busy, her job. Um, shall I have my people call your people and set something up? Hi, yes, busy coming back, LOL. When you take a full seven days off uh, away, a lot have a lot to catch up. How are you? What else can your people do other than setting up dates? All right, so not particularly helpful for making plans, but at least she's engaging, we're talking, et cetera. Um, and it's, it's kind of logistical, but I want to keep it fun, right? When you're getting into this logistic back and forth setting plans, you don't just be like plans, 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 because then it looks really needy. So I want to keep it fun. So I go, they're pretty good at sales, marketing, video production, and customer service. 
But for witty, charming banter, I'm afraid only the head of the organization will be able to satisfy your needs. Um, and yes, the satisfy your needs was intentionally said that way so it would be vaguely sexual, but not overtly sexual. And so here she sends uh, a, a, a gif, gif, whatever the hell you call it, of um, a bunch of um, minions. And she says, this is your team, question mark. Now, this is really interesting because this text required thought and effort. She went and found this, this picture, decided to put it in here, decided to try and be clever, decided to be funny. That means she's very invested in this text. When you get stuff like that from girls, it's a decent idea to take a little extra long to respond to it if there's not a reason not to. If you're trying to make plans for tonight, go ahead and re respond and make the plans. But if it's this, this kind of back and forth where there's no plan, there's no, um, there's no deadline, there's no rush to it, it's a decent idea to take a little extra long to respond to something like this because very often they will get self-conscious. They'll be like, oh God, I, I sent this text. Was it weird? Was it wrong? Because they were trying to be clever. They're trying to be cute. They're trying to be funny. If it came off weird, they feel weird about it. So because she's invested in the text, you clearly know she invested her time, energy, and thought into it. It's a good one to delay a little long and make her wonder. And lo and behold, she texts, anyways, are you free Friday? For more examples of messaging, text game, and literally date after date after date, check out the course that this clip came from, Online Dating Academy. And if you somehow still don't know what Online Dating Academy is, it's my eight week online dating masterclass where I teach you everything I've learned in 20 plus years of online dating. We start with your photos, your profile, we get to your messaging, how to optimize for the algorithm, how to hack the system, so to speak, and even how to go on dates like the date you've seen here. For more, and I mean a lot more, check it out at the link below. I can't wait for you to see what's inside this product. I'm incredibly proud of it. All right, she got a little nervous, got a little insecure. She goes ahead and makes plans. So I say Friday to Sunday, I'm out of town. Any other day this week is good. She says next week then. So we're back to this scheduling thing. I say, okay, I'll check in over the weekend. But look, good luck unburying yourself from work. She said, thanks, where are you going for the weekend? So this is just logistics, but it's also conveying high value. She travels a lot, I travel a lot. There's a similarity there. So I say, no, we're crazy this weekend, just LA. I'm sure we'll both have fun weekends in any case. Seems to be in our nature, right? So giving a compliment, saying we're both cool people. Just a nice little camaraderie there. She says, haha, I'm sure. Um, and then I follow up the next week. So if we were to meet for a drink this week, would week weekend or weekday be best for you? She says Wednesday or late end of Thursday. So I say both work for you. So whichever you have more time, I guess. It sounds like that's tomorrow. That would have been Wednesday because um, this is on Tuesday. She says, awesome. Where do you want to meet? So I say, how about venue and then location? Um, and this is not a venue I was familiar with. For all of these dates, I was going to, to new venues I wasn't familiar with. I was staying in unusual places. So I had to Google and find the place and in hindsight, this place was fine. It was nice and classy and whatnot. It wasn't the greatest for a date. It was okay, but it was a little too formal and corporate and nice and upscale. Um, I, I would have preferred something a little darker, more like divey or whatever, but it works, whatever. Um, she says, perfect. And then she had to cancel on me, unfortunately. Um, she goes, apologies. I'm on my way to a meeting in right now. We'll be a bit late when I come back in with traffic. Uh, let's still aim for tomorrow night if you're still free, 8 or 8.30 for same location. And this was annoying. Uh, mostly because I had scheduled other dates around her date and so I had to push them. And so you're going to see, um, or you, you will already see if you watch these in chronological order, the earlier dates for the day, how there was some scheduling issue and I had to push them around and move them around a little bit to make this one work. Um, and I ended up having the, the three dates back to back to back in the same day because of this. But whatever, it's fine. I say, sure, I think that should still be fine. And the reason for that is of the three dates, this is the one that I kind of prioritize. So I'm willing to let her push my schedule a little bit. For the other girls, I would have given pushback or canceled or something like that if it interfered with a date that I had prioritized higher. She says, cool, uh, let's meet for tomorrow then. Looking forward to finally meeting you. Yes, sounds good. So she says, so I'll text you when I'm done with work. Should be around the range of 8 to 8.30. And so I say, sure, I'll be in the area. Just let me know. And there I'm just trying to be very casual. Um, and then she goes, looking good for tonight. Let's meet at the place at the time, um, sounds good, see you shortly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then she actually, um, little preview, you'll, you'll, you'll see the whole, um, whole date in a minute, but she goes, was fun last night, um, enjoy your trip, et cetera. So it ended, little spoiler, um, it ended it did very well and she's talking about how, how much fun she had last night. Um, but uh, let's get into the actual date so you can see how it played out up to there as well. Nobody works, everybody's so entitled. And mm -hmm. 
well, that's why you're going to take over the world, you know, because you're totally like the one person that's going to like... I keep saying, I, like, I really don't think I'm not as smart, but since I moved to the United States, <laughs> I feel like I'm a genius. It's great. Wow, you just like completely just like ragged on an entire country in one sentence. Well, well played. They are really, yeah. I, I'm, I would say one percent of people. They are pretty, pretty yeah, top notch. So a lot of what has happened at this point will be cut out due to biography because a lot of personal stuff. You know, and at the start of the conversation, the girl telling me a bunch of biographical facts. Um, but this is a good indicator of a blueprint and who this girl is. She's very confident, a little bit sassy. Um, really does believe in herself. And so I'm going to let her talk quite a bit and you're going to see a lot of me letting her talk, letting her tell stories. Hopefully not all of them have to be eliminated from biography. Um, and then just making sort of like side comments, little teases, but letting her talk a lot more than I might let other girls talk. Usually the more confident the girl, the more she has to say. And if she's willing to talk along the right lines, you should just let her talk herself into bed, so to speak. So I went to the casino. The thing is, I'm not that good at poker. That's why when I play, I don't drink. Okay. But once I'm like, let it go, like I was like, okay, you play, I can drink, right? So we walk in, it's like a poker room. And the, she play, I sit next to her and I just order for drinks. The waitress coming in. Mm -hmm. She asked me, what do you want to drink? I say, uh, Jim, uh, I say, what kind of whiskey you have? Because I usually drink uh, whiskey neat. Okay. So she said, oh, they Very classy. Have James. I guess, I guess, I mean, I don't like any sugar in my drink. Fair enough. So, we'll be opposite. Whenever we order, I'll order for both of us and they'll always give me yours and you mine. A hundred percent every time. And then you have the girly drink, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, today is my weekday, so... Oh, yeah. I kind of uh, a bit weak. So again, this is just a light tease. The reason I bring your attention to this one is because of what comes after the tease, which is whenever we order, this will always happen, right? This idea of a we frame, this idea of when we're dating, this will happen. Now it's in a joking way. It's sort of in like a self-effacing way even. Um, but I am bringing up the idea of we as an entity. I'm bringing up the idea of a future, bringing up the idea of future drinks without making a big deal of it in a way that's just assumed that it's going to happen. This is a really good technique to use. These days. I just barely get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Uh, that, that, that genetic is not right. Like they say Asians cannot drink. As you can. Yeah. Okay. You. That's good. So I'm glad anyway. I didn't want to have to be like, you know, carrying you out on a, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm glad you can handle yourself. I don't want you embarrassing me. And again, a nice little tease there. So these are just thrown in sporadically. They're not all the time, but I am getting the teases and I'm not just allowing it to be normal conversation. Hey, where are you from again? Colorado. Nice, nice. Yep. Sweet, innocent, small town boy. Don't use your big city charms on me. I've been to Colorado. I, uh... And you never came and looked me up. I thought what we had was special. I thought we meant something to each other, but I, I get it. I understand. I am a city girl, I have to say. I never camped. Okay. I never voluntarily camped. But <laughs> I camped growing up because, like, my school made me do oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, we... I grew up, uh, before I come to this country, I never saw rainbow. Wait, what? This is a good example of, I threw in some teases and they didn't necessarily work in a big way, right? It's not like they got big reactions or whatever, but what did they do? is they are just nudging the conversation in a more man to woman direction. And the reactions were not negative, right? She just kind of like responded, kind of light laugh, light giggle, whatever, and then moved on with her topic. But it's still a positive for the interaction. When you have teases that are not received amazingly, um, even if they're pseudo ignored, right? As long as they're in there at all, they help the interaction. The only time that it, the tease was bad is if there's an actively negative reaction to it. A tease that's sort of like half ignored or a tease that's like acknowledged and then moved on from still did achieve its end of making it more man to woman, even if it didn't achieve its end of making it immediately better in that moment. Well, it is what it is, yeah. I don't well, you're know. here and you seem to be, you know, you're doing okay. Yeah, I'm you're man here. managing to pay the bills and buy an occasional <laughs> plane ticket, you know, here and there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can't decide if you're like a little too crazy or just crazy enough sometimes. I really don't think I'm crazy. So this is an example where we were having decent conversation, decent amount of flirting, but I just decided I needed to rev it up. So I said, I can't decide if X or Y. So I just threw in a push pull. And the lesson here is that it doesn't have to be completely congruent. Now, I can't decide if you're too much of this or too little of this. It, it does make sense that this would come out of the conversation because I'm clearly assessing her based on the conversation, but it does not have to be strictly linear. There doesn't have to be this like A then B then C kind of flow to it. If the interaction needs teasing, give it teasing.
You don't think you're crazy? I think I'm too boring, actually. Really? Even yesterday. I'm sorry, I have to go now. I'm, yeah, I just, I, I just got a notification <laughs> on my phone. My, um, my, I think my cat's sick in the hospital, and I, I really have to go take care of her. <laughs> but I want you to know, I still think you're a wonderful person. It's not you, it's me. Um, mm -hmm. This like fake breakup thing, you may have seen that in other contexts, but anything I can do to push away, to set the frame, to show a willingness to walk away is a good thing to do, especially the more confident the girl, the more high status the girl, the more the attractive the girl, the more that kind of stuff. It's nice to have that in there somewhere. Then they both bring their boyfriend, they like want to, we have a big uh, Airbnb, they both want to have a more private room or whatever, because they have their boyfriend. They're like fighting over stupid things, it's like stupid American kids. And then... You know and, you are in this country voluntarily, right? <laughs> I am very worried about the future of this country. I, Me too, actually. I am very. After this trip, especially. Oh my God. Fair enough. I so, want to tell at the risk of convincing you that all white guys like just party all the time and stuff like that, assuming assuming you have time, do you want to go? There's a like a rooftop around the around the way. If you want to go over there, <laughs> it could be fun. But <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to keep you out all night or anything because I, you know. I'm oh, you, to... you go in later? Huh? Okay. You go there tonight? Yeah, you're just over at, uh, just at the, just oh, okay. the rooftop over there, just around the corner. What time is it? 10? Um, you go for a little bit. Yeah, for a little bit, yeah. Okay. I'll leave it before midnight, yeah. Okay. You'd be all responsible and whatnot? Yeah. I'm very responsible. Okay, so obviously this is just the, the seating of the next venue, um, which is going to be a venue where we can um, sit in a more intimate environment, um, the fact that it is the next venue is good. The fact that it is the hotel I'm staying at doesn't hurt. Um, so that's all really positive. The biggest thing to notice here is how sort of casual and nonchalant I am about the whole thing and how I'm just kind of like, yeah, we can do this or not or whatever, right? Um, like I am persuasive enough and it's clearly like an idea that I'm throwing out there and it's clearly something I'm getting behind, but I also don't seem to be deeply invested. I don't seem to care too much one way or another. And so the fact that it's not a big deal and the fact that it's not... There's not a lot of pushiness around it. Makes it a lot easier to say yes to. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel know. like I, I have a feeling actually that you and me will both be bad influences on each other. I have I have a feeling. Really? Yeah, because you're you're shady in certain ways that I like, but don't let myself do. And then I think I'm shady and irresponsible in ways you don't let yourself do too. But I am very responsible. Like I guess oh, I am very. Yeah. I am very. Seriously. Uh -huh. Right, and that's a nice little um, statement of we, like statement of what we'd be like together, statement creating tension, et cetera. Um, and so just good flirtatious frame, um, good idea in general. And just the frame that you're going to be bad for her is good. The frame that she's going to be bad for you is good. And the frame you're both going to be bad for each other obviously would be doubly good if you're doing math. Um, but yeah, just another good example of a flirty line. I think I party more often than you, but probably not as extreme as you, is my guess. I only party that much. Very extreme was in Miami. Mm -hmm. Miami was totally different. Here, I feel like you kind of feel like you're in the real world, like reality. This is like where your job is? Yes, in Miami. If you worked in Miami, you'd probably be like partying up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I like the Midwest. It's, it's fun, it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Every time I go there... Um, you're, just, you're just saying that because you like me. You can t I, tell me how you really feel, it's fine. Uh -huh. Every time I sometimes I craving for I don't know you guys have the green chili there. Okay. You guys have the, the like a water burger? That's the water burger? Yes. That's like a Texas thing, but yeah. <laughs> they probably have other places, but the first place the only time I ever had it was in Texas. Yeah. I like that. Okay. I always go for the green chili burger. Okay. Yeah, I like spicy food, yeah. Uh -huh. I can be a little bit cowboy. Yeah. You look cute in a cowboy hat and just put it like yeah. put some boots on. You I like Texas. Uh -huh. I do too actually. <laughs> I went to school in Texas for two years. So. Oh, which part? Oh. Yeah, not the not the cool fun part, <laughs> but it's all right. It's all right. I was like, I like whiskey, I like guns, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can handle a little bit. Yeah, whiskey, guns, poison, drugs, <laughs> scams, you know. <laughs> That's fine. I remember, I remember a messaging from way back. I, I, I went and double checked it. I, I know. I know. So that's just good banter and callbacks, right? Remembering the conversation, the things we teased about before that worked. It, over time, the longer you talk to the girl, the bigger your catalog of teases should get and the easier teasing should become, right? So in there, I just like literally just listed callbacks and that was my tease. Yeah, it was like party, like with your friends? Uh, no, it's just, oh, hang on. I don't know what's up with this, but okay. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, no, just just a good place to hang out. Like it's kind of like um, more chill, like rooftopy kind of oh, place, okay. and oh, whatever. Just a different environment, different vibe. I've been there. Yeah. I used to have a I have a high school friend. She... So here she brings back up the next plans because obviously I'm getting the check, so that it makes sense they were going there. And I, what I want to do, I want to just be casual about it, laid back about it. I'm not again selling that it's amazing. I'm selling that it's no big deal. It's cool. It's chill. It's no big deal. The main attraction is us, and it's just the next logical step. He uh, used to living across the street. Okay. He told me it's a perfect place to stay because you can pick up all the tourists. Okay. Yeah, All right. Fair enough. Well, if you need to pick up some tourists, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you. If you see a cute tourist, I'll be like, hey. And that's a nice little misinterpretation there, right? She's clearly talking about a guy friend of hers picking up female tourists, but I flip it around as though she's going to pick up the tourists. It also is a good way of teasing and, and not being overly interested when I talk about I'll introduce her to some cute tourists if she sees them, etc. So just a nice little, a nice little reversal of the frame. Yeah, go find it. Oh, I legit. Okay, that's right. Oh, okay, 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 I just put it in my pocket. <laughs> Was going Somebody's on drugs. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I'm so distracted by you. I just like, I can't, I can't even handle it. It just is what it is. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night. So nice little tease there as we're on our way out the door. Um, so now we're off to the next venue. Yeah, it's not bad. That's what to do, yeah. Can't complain. It's good. I swear you have the most expressive face sometimes. Really? So here we're walking and I don't want to make it way more escalated than it has been before. I don't want to get super sexual more than it has been because um, you don't want to escalate when you're on your way to a good thing and the venue change is the most important thing. But I do want to keep the flirtation and banter going. So here's a good standard tease. I just noticed it had gone too long without any flirtation, without any teasing. It was getting a little logical. So I throw in this tease along the walk. Really? No. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't have a mirror with me all the time, so I don't know what my face is going to look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he lived in a rental place here for many years after college because he said every night he would go to Okay. And just like trying Pick to talk the to the girls. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. No, it's, it's a chill place. It has a nice vibe. I literally haven't been to that. Maybe since COVID? Okay. A lot of places I used to like all has changed. Yeah, well, a lot of the well, a lot of the top, quote unquote, top clubs shut down too, right? Like they used to have a restaurant I like around here. It's a it's a restaurant. They have the like what you. This girl obviously is a bit of a socialite. She knows restaurants and clubs and cities and travel a lot. Um, but in general, knowing this kind of stuff is helpful a little bit. Um, if it seems like you're in the know and you know the cool places, it's another little boost to your attractiveness. It's another way to be a high value guy, especially during a transitional period like this, where I don't want to escalate sexually or physically or take big risks, but I want to be high value. Um, this type of conversation, if you happen to be good at it, if you happen to know the venues and, and, and places in a particular city, it can be a useful topic. It's still here, the Taco Bell. I don't know. Again, I don't, I, I'm staying in this area for now, but I, I don't like, you know, last week I was staying in Lori's side. Like, oh if, we'd, if, if, we, if we met up last that last week, we would have been down there. Side. Yeah, yeah. Where's your favorite hotel by far? Um, I like, I like a lot actually. I think it has a good combination of East not Village? being, yeah. It's like has a good combination of things to do around it and it's very convenient yeah, that's cool. for like living. It's not like super, obviously it's not super boss. It's not like St. Regis or something. Yeah, let's like not walk on a ton of trash as we go across here. Um, yeah, please don't, please don't get killed while I'm with you. It's, I'm a very aggressive city girl. Usually, I'm yeah. Like, what the fuck? No, it's fine. <laughs> just, just if you if you get killed, then I'm gonna have to answer all these awkward questions with the police and stuff. I don't, I don't want to deal with that. So. I probably overuse that line, but I use that line when walking with girls a lot. It seems to work really well. It's a nice little way to keep the banter going. A nice way to be caring without being too caring. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in because I do use that line or some some form of it very frequently. But you're I'm smart though. You're sure. smart. You don't watch out for the car, but you watch out for the bike. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got it you figured know, out. You can get the insurance covered by the car, but those <laughs> bikes just run away. That insurance is going to help you a lot when you're dead. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> pay out to your heirs. And then I'll show you the texts afterwards, um, just as kind of a you know, just showing 
just showing that, that things were still going well and she, she was happy with how the night went. Um, I think you saw the, the first one as a preview, but we'll go through the rest of them really quick. So afterwards, she texted me spontaneously without me texting her. It was fun last night. Enjoy your trip. Um, I say thanks. It was good to finally meet you. I've never had so much fun hearing how doomed my country is. I cut out a lot of that stuff because it's biographical, but she definitely was saying that kind of stuff. So that's a callback humor thing. Um, she has, LOL, I can be very bitchy and straightforward. Um, work habit. Um, so I said, I'm just glad you weren't boring. Uh, so what does your week, our schedule look like over the next week or so? Traveling constantly and working 160 hours as usual. She says, LOL, I'm back and don't want to travel anymore until late October. And then the next day from that, she goes, what are you doing tonight? Um, I say, I'm down somewhere outside the city this evening, um, but later this week would work for me, perhaps Wednesday. She says, sure, let's do that. Um, I say, sounds good. I have a client during the day. Should be free in the evening. Cool around what time? I should be doing between seven and eight, closer to seven. And she goes, by the way, do you want to see tomorrow? I have tickets, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see, after the date, going very well, and she's the one pursuing plans with me. That's how you want it afterwards. You don't want to be like, you know, afterwards hitting her up for plans. You want her hitting you up for plans. And so that's, um, that's the vibe you want. You want the girl chasing. So hopefully you enjoyed that infield and hopefully you learned a lot from it. I know I particularly actually enjoy these girls that tend to be busy because I like it when a girl has things going on in her life. I like it when a girl's ambitious. I know everybody's different in terms of that, but I do like that. So that's particularly useful for me um, when you know how to actually make dates with girls that have shit going on. And by the way, just because a girl is difficult to schedule that first date with doesn't mean it's difficult to schedule future dates with her. Yes, sometimes girls are busy in general, but the more a girl likes you, the more she makes you a priority and she'll start scheduling around you. So it does get a lot easier as well. For more examples of messaging, text game, and literally date after date after date, check out the course that this clip came from, Online Dating Academy.